All right, today on the bench, we've got this Tektronix DMM157 multimeter. And those of you who've been watching me for a while may remember that I got this a long time ago um, in a kind of bulk buy from an auction. And I've never really messed with it. I turned it on to make sure that it actually powered on. And uh, DC volts seem fine, so I threw it on the side and haven't messed with it for a while. Well, recently I saw it in my pile and decided to pull it out and start checking it out. And it was giving me like a really small, subtle little issue um, where um, there'd be times where you'd turn it on or off and it would just kind of give it a little bitty chirp. Um, kind of like the continuity tester was, you know, getting just really fast, fast activated, like just... You could barely, barely hear it. Um, and I'm sorry I already pulled the batteries out of it so you can't actually see what it's doing. But it was very subtle and it was very inconsistent. So I may not be able to duplicate it even if I had the batteries in it. But whenever I pulled it open, I realized that the batteries themselves, or rather the battery holder, was the problem. Um, the batteries had corroded. And it was getting really poor contact on the little springs and points in there for the batteries. So, today we're going to fix that. Now it uses one of these um, kind of separate battery holsters. Which, I actually kind of like these compared to other methods because if these do corrode, um, and you catch it in time, it's a really simple fix. All I did was go on Amazon and I bought some really cheap replacement ones. I think I paid six bucks for these to get six of them. So, you know, this to me equals a, a one dollar repair. So, they look exactly identical. They're the same length, same width, same height. And good long wires. So this will be a really simple fix. Um, then we'll check the meter out and make sure that we did actually fix it. And hopefully end up with a really good meter. From what I read on the DMM... 157 there was the there's the 157 and the 155 um i think the main difference between the two is that the 155 doesn't have a current range all right um we gotta pull the screen off here just some plastic clips that hold the screen on so it's be real careful whenever you remove that and then we should be able to separate these two boards yep. so this is our rear panel uh, you can see our range switch here and the contacts are on actually both sides of it there's contacts on this board and contacts on the other board and here's the board that actually holds our battery holder. You can see these range switch contacts here. Very little wear on these uh, for what I can see. I don't know if that's just because Tektronix has really high quality range switches. Or this meter hasn't been used much. I kind of tend to believe that it hasn't been used much. Because normally batteries don't corrode on meters. They get used a lot. Because people normally kill batteries and change them out on the regular so full disclosure here I've actually attempted this repair before um, right before I made the video I pulled the meter apart just to look at it and said oh well it's a you know battery corrosion issue let me just go ahead and <clears throat> excuse me let me just go ahead and clean it up and as I tried to clean it up, it just, it didn't work out good. The ground wire itself was actually starting to corrode against the board. 
and it was breaking and not making good contact and the the back side of this or the front side of this battery spring was actually not contacting the battery well at all um, you can move the meter and the meter would turn off so it really it just just kind of trying to clean it up wasn't working so i went ahead and found the new battery holders um before we do that let's Look at this board. Uh, it doesn't look like the corrosion actually traveled at all, which is extremely lucky for us. All right, so let's go ahead and cut this battery connector down to where we kind of need it to be. It does. It's not going to hurt us to leave it a little bit longer. Uh, there is plenty of room in the case, but I do want to make sure that I don't have just a mile and a half of cord in there because that's just too much. So we'll cut it down, uh, maybe something, maybe a half inch longer than what we think we uh, need from this one. I've also already let it through the strain relief on the board. That is a really important thing to get right is to actually make sure that you get the strain relief lead correctly because that can really affect things like you don't realize. All right, I've stripped off, stripped off probably about, I don't know, 3 to a quarter of an inch of wire. And let's go ahead and try to wick some of this solder off too. It's going to bother me if I leave that on there. All right, so I wasn't necessarily trying to wick the holes clean, although it did do it on the positive one. The ground one didn't have that much luck. Um, but that doesn't, in this case, that's not really super important. All right, let's see if we can get this ground wire in first. All right, I've broken out with my third hand to make soldering a little easier. Zoom out so you can see a little better. Alright, so I'm going to be using my usual solder. Uh, I've shown this to you guys before. This is the MG Chemicals. It's RA Flux 032 solder um, 6337. A really good solder. Um, I use it all the time just for my general purpose stuff. Kind of heat everything up here and give it a little dab, make sure it looks good. That one can stand a tiny bit more. Okay, let's get this put back together. So of course you're going to want to make sure that your header connections line up and push them in very gently. Make sure you have good connections. There's a three pin here and there's like a 10 pin or something here. That's going to look really good. There are some little bitty washers that came on these, so let's make sure we get those back. Always remember on these screws, you don't have to tighten them up a lot. Um, that's why I like using my little bitty screwdrivers to just make sure that, you know, I can't put a whole lot. If I really wanted to, I could take this number one here with this big handle and I couldn't really wrench down on it. But 
I find it always better to use the little precision screwdrivers if you can just because it kind of discourages you to really you know knuckle down and of course we can't forget the screen just make sure it snaps back on completely Battery time. I really like the Tektronix scent. Like an extra rubber band to go around these to hold them in where you know they don't come out. I think it also kind of offers a little bit of shock absorption. But honestly, if you don't have this, it's not necessary. Alright, so we may have to add a little relief loop in there. There we go. Just to kind of absorb some of that extra wire. Tuck that down in there. That looks fine. Kind of risky to completely reassemble this thing. Okay, well, risky or not, we do look like we have a working meter. It is kind of ghosting around on the millivolts. But I think that that's just kind of the way with this one. Alright, so let's give it a little bit of a voltage reference here. There we go. Should be seeing 2.5. There we go. That's better. 10K resistor here. Let's uh, see what it does in resistance. Looks good. Oh, sounds a little sick. So it still actually has that little beepy sound. I don't know if you can hear it. So maybe that's a feature or something. But I've been through, went through all the functions. Everything looks really good. Um, I don't know what could be wrong. I'm, well, I don't know what that beep could be. Uh, you know, maybe it, really, maybe it's just a little feature. Um, it does seem to be doing it a little bit more consistently. So. I'm going to call this repair good. Uh, thanks for watching, guys, and I'll see y'all next time.